set up a meeting with whoever he was texting and take this fucker out. I need you both there to make sure this shit is handled for our family. I trusted you. These are the drugs confiscated from today, deposited by the newly matriculated Tejada. Are you kidding me, Kiki? The entire firm is a giant fucking Ponzi scheme. I told you in confidence that I was getting loaned out of the fucking city to protect her. You went behind my back. And I was trying to protect you. You're protecting yourself as always. What's up, Power fans of YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another Power video. Now, in this video, I'll be talking about how Detective Young discovered Tariq's pipeline, the Rico case Jenny and Blanca are building, the meaning of this symbol, the Ponzi scheme, Monet's plan, sax, and other happenings in episode 7. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you're welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you have already subscribed, thanks for the support. Now let's get straight into the topics. In one of my last videos, I stated that if Tariq is smart, the best way to save himself is to get Afe on tape confessing to killing Lauren else. He has a long way to go in this case as innocent because as it stands now, only a confession by Evie herself will implicate her in this matter. Now we see Tariq making the smart move to convince Lauren with Evie's confession to killing her. Now this confession alone will go a long way to clear Tariq's name from a lot of perceptions about him. One is the fact that he doesn't have the killing gene in him. Efe said a perfect line about Tariq that he can use further to clear his name of many murder charges. Efe saying he couldn't do it himself shows that Tariq is really not the killer the first things and Lauren was not in danger with him. It will also prove that Tariq was indeed helping Lauren to run and survive. Now, from this discussion after the Russians were arrested with drugs, Blanca and Jenny seems to be getting closer to their Rico case, but there is a lot still missing in the puzzles that they need to fix. Now, this is the point where Junior here decided to start thinking of something on his own to find the missing puzzle Blanca and Jenny needs, which is the fact that Tariq and Braden are dealing at Western Holdings. According to Jenny, she already has eyes there all the time, but nothing came up. Now, what stood out for Junior to make a move to search for evidence at Western Holdings is when Blanca said that even if Tariq and Braden have been careful, chances are their clients haven't. Even if Tariq and Braden have been careful, chances are their clients haven't. This was an icebreaker for Junior, so his first search area has to be the trash at the place. Now, what did he do? He decided to pose as a homeless street guy searching through trash and he uncovers Tariq and Brady's pipeline at Western Holdings. I would say he did a great job with his disguise to find some evidence. This kid will potentially get some huge promotion for his contribution to the RICO investigation. That's our first big break. I just stole some trash. Which will help us take some human trash off the streets for good. The packaging for the drugs that you found at Weston Holdings is a match for the drugs we found on the Stansfield rooftop and the Jamaica Avenue Boys crime scenes. Now, moving forward, we'll possibly be seeing Medina in coming episodes as mentioned here by Blanca. I think we're ready to bring this to Medina. Medina was in OG power as well as working with Angela, Sachs, and Co. Now, Blanca reports directly to him. She initially wanted to go to Chicago to investigate some dealings there, which we all know that it has to do with Tommy. But instead, Medina asked her to stay for the Rico case here first. There's dead Serbs too, plus local Chicago players. I want to move on it. So let the Chicago office pick it up. I really think something big is happening. You can keep an eye on it, but I need you here focused for now, yeah? So I'm sure if this Rico case is done, we'll be seeing some crossovers in Power Book 4 and Blanca will possibly go after Tommy in Chicago. Now let's talk about Monet and her kids killing Kai and Godo. In my last video, I stated that Godo just signed his death warrant with Monet by thinking he has her in his pocket. I also gave some theories on different ways Monet can take Godo out. I specifically stated that if Monet wants to play safe for this information about her involvement in Lorenzo's death to stay mute, then her move needs to be in a way that before Drew puts bullets in Godo, there shouldn't be any type of conversation between them or else Godo will expose Monet to Drew before he catches any bullet. Truly, Monet played her cards well and Godo didn't have any chance to rat on her before dying. Now, like I stated in my last video, this move will make Monet go free for Lorenzo's death and I can see what the writers are trying to do. They want us to think it's over and these kids will never find out that their mother was involved in their father's death. But wait, there is another potential witness and that is Evelyn, their mother. The moment she hears the son is dead, she'll quickly do the math and know that Monet probably used her son to kill Lorenzo then expose her son for the fear of ratting on her and he is also dead. Now the question is, what will Evelyn do? 
If she moves to Monet eye to eye with this theory, Monet won't hesitate or waste a minute to take her out. So for me, the best thing Evelyn can do is to move to Kane, especially about how his mother approached her with a confession that Lorenzo was the one who put a hit on her husband. Evelyn can just break her theory to Kane and why her son ended up dead now. He will remember that Monet intentionally sent him out to check on Drew and she planted the same burner she used in texting Goro on Kai. Monet might successfully take out Goro but there are still some loose ends and that is Evelyn and I hope Goro didn't tell any of his brothers about what Monet told him and the move they made by killing Lorenzo else this will be another loose ends for Monet. Let me know what you also think in the comment section. Now let's talk about Sax. Now I keep saying that Sax is playing both sides to his advantage. He lied to Jenny that he didn't have access to Whitman's file, but we all know it was on his phone. He took a snapshot of it wanting to send it to Jenny the same day he tell her to discover Lauren. And I think Sachs feel like Whitman's file is something he should hold on to just in case Jenny tries her things again. Now from the beginning of this season, I stated that I have a feeling this will be the last season for Sachs. Some of you don't agree with this, but as we speak, things are closing in on Sachs. Now, Lauren exposed him to be working with the feds and he is a mo. Without any further waste of time, I'm sure Tariq will tell Davis about what he knows. Now, I don't expect Davis to approach Sachs immediately about his cover. Now, Davis is in danger for getting exposed by Sachs. The only person who doesn't want Davis in prison is Theo. Now, if Theo gets to know how exposed his little brother is and who is behind this, he will do all he can to take Sachs out. So, seeing Theo pulling up on Sachs here is not surprising. Let me know what you also think in the comment section about this. Now let's talk about the secret breeding uncovered. In my last video, I stated some possible secrets breeding can uncover. I further stated that whatever secret breeding will uncover is either we the audience know about it already or we don't at all. Now we were blown away with a very huge secret about the operations at Western Holdings. Happens that they are running a Ponzi scheme all this while. Now for the benefit of those who might not know what Ponzi scheme is or how it works, a Ponzi scheme is an investment fraud that pays the existing investor with funds collected from new investors. Ponzi scheme organizers often promise to invest your money and generate high returns with little or no risk. But in many Ponzi schemes, the fraudsters do not invest the money. So practically, Tariq's investment and that of Lorenzo's will now be used to pay older investors while they are looking for new investors and use their funds to now pay Tariq and the Tahara's investments when it's due. So basically, this is how Ponzi scheme system works. If anyone has any extra meaning to the Ponzi scheme, you can drop that in the comment section. Now, the probability of the Tahara's not getting back their investment is very high. Now, question is, will Braden expose his family business? Will he tell Tariq this secret? I believe these secrets can really jeopardize everything. Now, what will possibly happen if Braden opens his mouth about the Ponzi scheme? All investors will panic and will want their investment back at the same time, which Western Holdings will not be able to refund all those monies to the investors, hence the collapse of the business. This will also not attract any new investors since it's a Ponzi scheme. All the name, the influence, the powers that Westerns possess will be gone by night and they will be narrowed down to zero capital. People can go to jail for these two and the sad part is that Braden's father is not even aware he is running a Ponzi scheme. Now, in a Ponzi scheme, the newest investors are the ones who lose everything unlike the older investors. So in this case, we are looking at RSJ, Tariq and the Taharis possibly losing their investment should this secret about the Westerns goes out. If you're the one with all the big ideas... Tell me why the hell you're crying over Tariq St. Patrick. Now, Kiki here is beginning to put some negative ideas into Braden's head. Do you think Braden can do well without Tariq? Do you think what Kiki is saying will bring division between Braden and Tariq? Let me know what you think in the comment section about what I have stated so far. Now, let's move to this symbol. In this episode, we saw these symbols accompanied with Nomes drugs, and I'm sure most of you are wondering what this means. Well, let me take you back to Africa, specifically Ghana. This symbol is called the Sankofa symbol. Now, Sankofa is a word in the tree language of Ghana, meaning to retrieve. Literally means go back and get. So, San means to return. Ko means to go. Fa means to fetch, to seek, and to take. And also refers to the Bono Adinkra symbol, represented either with a stylish hat shape or by a bird with its head turned backwards while its feet face forward, carrying a precious egg in its mouth. Sankofa is often associated with the proverb, it is not wrong to go back for that which you have forgotten. The Sankofa bed appears frequently in traditional Akan art 
and has also been adopted as an important symbol in the African-American and the diaspora and African diaspora contest to represent the need to reflect on the past to build a successful future. It is one of the most widely dispersed and incredible symbol appearing in modern jewelry, tattoos, and clothing. So basically, that is it about this symbol. Let me know what else you know about this Sankofa symbol, even if you knew something about it at all. Now, let's talk about Diana. Like I stated in my last video, Diana will go down for this because she has been caught, but I have a feeling she might not go to jail. I'll speak about this in my next video on the possibilities and the options Diana has. But then, still on Diana and Salim, Kane was right when he said Salim's name sound like made the fuck up. Who's the Holy Hotel? The name's Salim. Salim Ashe Freeman. That shit sounds made the fuck up. My brother. Trust me, whoever is writing Kane's character is really growing him in much more smarter and sensitive way now than before. There is no way we should be downplaying Kane's intelligence moving forward. But as usual, Diana uncovers the truth about Salim and his background and surprisingly, he was raised by two white people and yet he pretend as if he never had anything to do with whites. But I think there is more to his history aside what Dirty Diana uncovered. Let me know what you think in the comment section about episode 7. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notification bell to get notified on my next video, like, share, most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.